You're listening to the original EER, the home of Elvis music on the web, Elvis Express Radio. And a big hello, yes, you're st- we're still with you this week in our special fourth part of this week's show, which of course is an interview as conducted by our very own Joe Crying. And over to you, Joe. Yeah, this is Joe Cathy uh, Brownlee, uh, Elvis Neuer as JC. Joe Cathy, JC, was with Elvis for about three months. She's a sweet lady. You're really going to enjoy this. So here you go. Have a good time. This is uh, Elvis Express Radio, and I'm Joe Crying, and I got with me Joe Cathy Bronley, uh, who her last name now is Elkington. How you doing, JC? I'm doing okay. Doing okay. JC, I'm going to call you JC for one reason, because Elvis used to call you JC. That's correct. Okay, so it's just easier for me. Uh, where were you born and where did you live? Where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in a small town in the Mississippi Delta, which is the uh, flat part of Mississippi, and um, a lot of cotton was grown there, soybeans, uh they still grow cotton there and soybeans, but a lot of catfish farms are there now as well. And it's about 150 miles south of Memphis. Okay. Uh, did you later move to Memphis? Yes. And uh, I'm from, the town that I'm from is Indianola, Mississippi. And if it sounds familiar to you, it is the home of B.B. King. Oh, cool. And uh, there's a, uh, actually, there's a B.B. King Museum in Indianola. Oh, cool. Now, when you were growing up, uh, what kinds of music did you like? Well, I just liked, uh, oh, I know the when I really got into music, uh, I, we had the British invasion, and, uh, of course, I liked the Beatles, and... Um, uh, I always liked Elvis as well uh, because my daddy would bring us to Memphis and we would ride down Highway 51 and he would drive us by Graceland. And even though most people my age were Beatles fans, I was always just fascinated with Elvis because I got to see his house so many times as a young girl. Right. Now, uh, when was the first time that you went to see Elvis in concert? The first time I saw him in concert was in 1974. I, uh, I was a school teacher. Um, I had a part-time job at the Mid-South Coliseum, and Elvis performed at the Coliseum in 1974, uh, let me count. He had five shows. Uh, they sold out immediately. The first four did. And so another show was added uh, a few days after the first two shows. So working there, I got to see hmm. and meet anybody and everybody, you know, I, I wanted to meet uh, other than Elvis. Uh, that was, I guess you could say, real tight security when, when Elvis was there. But I did go to all of those shows and only bought tickets to one show, and I, I had a, a really good seat maybe on about the second row. So the first time I saw him in concert was 1974. So how was it seeing Elvis Presley in concert? Well, uh it was pretty incredible uh, because I had been such a fan of his for so long. And I think you asked me earlier maybe when I came to Memphis. I came to Memphis in 1969 as a junior in college, and I went to Memphis State. That was what it was called at the time, and uh, then stayed in Memphis after that. And I actually lived in Whitehaven back then and uh, had a, uh, a friend, well, I guess my boss at the time, I worked at a little store there during the summer, and he had a friend who lived on Dolan Drive on the same side of the street as Mr. Vernon. Mm-hmm. And so 
I would go over there when I would get off work and climb that <laughs> the lady fits and just watch for Elvis when I knew he was in town. I mean, here I was, 21 years old and <laughs> doing stuff like that. It's kind of embarrassing now, but uh, I did because I was a big fan. Did you ever see him? Uh, yes, just from a distance. I saw him riding horses, but I never took any pictures back then. Mm-hmm. So when did it, how did it come about that you finally met Elvis? Well, I, uh, back to the concerts, I also saw Elvis in, I believe, whatever month it was, in 1975 that he performed at the Mid-South Coliseum. And at that time, I had a steady boyfriend but I was also working for the Memphis Southman Grizzlies, which was a professional football team with the short-lived World Football League. Mm -hmm. And I was a hostess in the press box. So, in other words, I taught school, but, but that was during uh, what, September through uh, the end of May. And then I worked part-time at the Coliseum, and I worked for the Grizzlies in the press box. So... The first time I met Elvis, um, he was a guest of the owner of the team in the press box. And that's when I first met him, and it was in late July of 1975. Now, is that when the funny story happened? That, well, you told me a story about uh, being in the press box and Elvis was there. Is that when this, that story happened? Well, it didn't happen uh, the first night that I met him. It happened exactly one le one week later than that. Okay. Um, could you tell me first about how did it come? Okay, so you just, he was there and you just happened to see him or somebody introduced you to Elvis or? Well, I was a, I was a hostess in the press box mm -hmm. and I was actually assigned to the box where Elvis was, along with another girl who was a hostess in the press box. And Elvis came that night with, um, he was with Linda Thompson, and uh, some other people were there. Dr. Nicopolis was there, who I knew. Uh, one of my best friends was Barbara Klein, uh, George Klein's first wife. You know, George wrote the book. Elvis, my best man, well, Barbara was who he was married to then, and she, Elvis was her best man as well. But mm -hmm. um, they were there, and uh, Barbara actually introduced me to Elvis, and I spoke with Linda quite a bit because uh, we were, we went to Memphis State together. That was what the University of Memphis was called back then. So I knew Linda from Memphis State. And uh, I met him that first night in the press box, and he was always saying, J.C., get me this, get me that, get me pizza, <laughs> get me a Coke, if you don't mind. And the other girl was just standing there. He never asked her to get him anything. We, I, have so, to, I have to ask, did your boss say to you that you had, you had to be good and not bother Elvis, I mean, to get that job to be in the press box? Uh, no, no, no instructions. What, whatsoever, and I was just being myself, and Barbara came up to me one time, and she said, J.C., watch what you're saying and doing. She said, I can tell that Elvis is looking at you <laughs> through the glass of the press box. And I said, oh, okay. I mean, I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. I didn't think I was. Right. Uh, but uh, when he got up to leave, he had on a blue... I guess you could call it a leisure suit, uh, what what used to be called leisure suits, and he had a scarf around his neck. And I had actually caught a scarf of his at the first concert that I went to. And I said to him, I, I said, is that a real Elvis scarf? And he said, well, honey, well, not really. And he took the scarf off and put it around my neck, and pulled me toward him and kissed me, and with Linda standing right there. And, I mean, it didn't seem to phase her, and I thought, 
oh, my God, I'm not believing this. I mean, I, I cannot <laughs> wait to tell everybody. And uh, so that was the first time we met. It was on a Saturday night in uh, late August of 1975. So how was it? I mean, every girl out there right now who's swooning because they're hearing what happened to you, how was it kissing Elvis Presley? Oh, well, it was probably everything and more than any girl would would, would think it would be. Um, to me, uh, I guess it was just a little different because I had a steady boyfriend at the time, and we were pretty serious, but he knew I was an Elvis fan, and he knew Elvis was at the game, and everybody at the game knew Elvis was at the game because the women in the stands would just stand up and turn around and look up at the press box instead of looking out on the field at the ball game. Mm -hmm. um, but let's see, that was on a Saturday night. And then um, on Monday, my friend Barbara called me and she had gotten a call from Sonny West. And Sonny said, uh, that Elvis wanted to give me a hundred dollars for being so nice to him in the press box, and uh, Sonny said, "Well, Barbara, that's not all. He wants JC's phone number because he wants to ask her out." <laughs> Jeez. So, <laughs> okay. So she she called to tell me that, and of course I was real excited. Um, but you know, I thought, okay, now am I gonna? go if he asked me uh am i gonna go and not tell my boyfriend uh what am i gonna do so i didn't have to worry about it for a couple of days and then on a thursday night i was over at uh barbara and george's and i was washing clothes because at the time i didn't have my own washer and dryer so Dr. Nicopolis called over there and asked Barbara if she knew where I was. And uh, Barbara said, yes, yeah, she's over here washing clothes. And he said, well, tell her to go home because Elvis is trying to call her. So she told me that, and without hesitation, <laughs> I, I went home. And <laughs> as I was walking in the door, my phone was ringing. And uh, I said, hello. And this voice said, J.C.? EP. And I said, oh, hi, Elvis. And he said, hi, are you busy tonight? <laughs> and I said, well, no, not really. And he said, well, I've rented the Crosstown Theater and a couple of movies, and I'd love for you to come out to Graceland and meet my daughter, Lisa, and I'll show you around Graceland, and then we can go to the movies. And I said, Okay, so uh, he said, I'm going to put Sonny back on the phone, and you tell Sonny how to get to your house, and uh, I'll get Sonny to pick you up. So that's how he asked me out on my first date with him. Okay, so I, I don't want to miss the, uh, the story about being in the press box, and so you know the story I'm talking about, so yeah. make, make sure we don't miss that story. So is that going to happen Soon or did well, that, that or? happened the following. Um, let's see, that was Thursday night, so that happened two nights later. Um, I'll briefly just tell you about my first date with Elvis. Yeah, go right um, ahead, honey. You don't have to be brief, go right ahead. Okay, <laughs> well, um, we immediately hit it off, I guess you could say. Um, having a boyfriend and being in a relationship, I guess I was more reserved maybe than I would have normally have been probably. But I guess working at the Coliseum as long as I did, I had met so many celebrities and, you know, I, I never uh, acted foolish around celebrities. But uh, Elvis and I, it was like we had known each other for quite a while, even, you know, just the first hour or so that we were together. And we rode to the cross town. I could not tell you the movie we saw that first night. And um, it was, 
we just talked the whole night. And uh, I remember we were. I was telling him this is kind of interesting. Uh, the place where I lived in Midtown was owned by a lady whose name was Miss Mrs. M R S. Period. Patty P A T T Y. Well, when I told him, I said. You, the lady that I rent from knows you, and he asked who it was, and I said, it's Miss Patty. Well, Anita Wood had lived with Miss Patty back when she was dating Elvis, mm-hmm. and I was renting one of her duplexes, uh, which was next door to the house where Anita lived. And I said, she came over the other day, and she said that Elvis Presley has gone crazy. I read in the paper He's given Cadillacs to total strangers, and he thought that was really funny. And uh, Elvis had just bought a bunch of Cadillacs, and uh, just a strange lady was on the lot and looking at cars, and he asked this lady if she liked a certain car, and she said yes, and he said, well, I'm buying it for you. And uh, he said, well, did you think I was crazy for doing that? And I said, well, no, not really, but I said, you know, who knows if that lady could have even put gas in the car or or (laughs) afforded the insurance. Right. And he did ask me what I could afford, and I said, Elvis, I don't need a car. I just paid my last payment on my car. I I don't need a car. So that was kind of all that was mentioned about cars other than he did ask me what my favorite color was. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, it was red, and huh. it's still red. And I told him my favorite color was red. So uh, we got back to Graceland. We went upstairs, and Elvis said, Honey, do you mind if I put on something a little more comfortable? And oh, boy. And I kind of cleared my throat, and I thought, <laughs> uh, Well, I guess not. Uh, and so he put his pajamas on. Uh-huh. And... Uh, he got out a book on numerology, and he was asking me what what my birthday was, what year and month and date, and uh, and I still to this day I don't I don't know about numerology or understand it or what my number is, but I remember him telling me that night and reading from that book uh, about my number. I remember he told me that. White was a good color for me, and that platinum was a good metal to have next to my skin. That's all I remember about my number, whatever my number was. Uh-huh. And uh, he, the word esoteric came up as we were reading in the book, and he asked me if I knew what it meant. And no, I didn't know what it meant. So he said, well, why don't you go downstairs and ask Sonny for a dictionary? And I said, okay. And we had gone up the front stairs of Graceland, so I figured, well, I'll just walk out of his bedroom doors and go down the front stairs, which is what I did. And um, I noticed Elvis was following me. And when we got to the bottom of the stairs, a bunch of the guys were standing in the foyer, and the front door to Graceland was open. And Elvis walked past me and kind of motioned for me to come there. And one of his guys was standing there with a brand-new Pontiac Grand Prix. It was maroon, not red. And Elvis said, Honey, I hope this one's okay. It was the best I could do at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my goodness. What would you think? (laughs) Well, I didn't know what to think. I mean, I just, I was so excited, and I hugged his neck and at that point, Elvis and I had never really kissed, other than that first, that one kiss, you know, in the press box that night. Right. And I just, you know, I couldn't think. Well, the first thing I thought was, I said, well, well, Elvis, let me ask you something. I said, um, are you going to use my car as a trade-in? And he looked at me like I had four heads. And I said, well... Uh, he said, well, what do you mean? He said, no, I don't, I don't want your car. And I said, well, I just wanted to know if I could give my car to my mother. And he said, well, I don't care what you do with your <laughs> other car. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
So looking back, I thought, oh, I can't believe I said that. But that was on my first date with him, and I guess I'm one of the recipients of many automobiles that Elvis gave away in his lifetime. Wow. But that was on our on our first date. Okay. And uh, he, uh, he told me that night that he really had a good time, and... But he said, I can tell you're committed to someone. And he said, I have to protect my feelings as well. But if anything changes, if you will let me know, all you have to do is call this number. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he gave me the number to Graceland. And so I guess it was uh, about sunrise, and uh, I got in my new car and, drove down to the gates of Graceland and on to Elvis Presley Boulevard and, and drove home. Now, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, honey. Well, and I was going to get to the uh, the next date, I guess you could say, uh, and I know what story you're referring to. Uh-huh. Uh, so that was on um, a Thursday night. So this was Friday morning. There was another game Saturday night. And I went to work, and um, Elvis came without Linda to the game. So he asked the owner of the Memphis Southland Grizzlies if I could sit with him during the game. And, of course, the owner said, you're welcome to sit with J.C. I mean, I was getting paid $10 a night to be a hostess in the press box. So we sat there and just talked the whole night, hardly watched the ball game, really didn't talk to anybody else. It was just, even though there were other people in there, we just kind of kept to ourselves. And I said, I'm going to run to the restroom. And he said, I think I'll go at the same time. So Elvis got up to go to the restroom, and I did too. And I walked in, and uh, there was a lady in there. And she looked at me. She was very serious. She said, I heard... Elvis Presley is at the game tonight. And I said, "Uh uh-huh. And she said, I even heard that he is sitting in the press box. And I said, "Uh uh-huh. Of course, I did not want to dare tell her that I was with him. Mm -hmm. And she said, I heard he's in the bathroom right now. (laughs) And I thought, oh, Elvis is going to love this story. And I said, "Uh uh-huh. And she looked at me as serious as she could be, and she said, you know, I didn't think he did that. And she walked out. (laughs) (laughs) So I cannot wait to get back to the box where we were sitting, and I said, you will not believe what this lady just said to me. Well, he thought it was the funniest story he had ever heard. In fact, he thought it was so funny that when he was in Las Vegas in August of that year, and this was early August, uh, my mother and I were there. We were his guest in Las Vegas, and he actually told the story on stage in Vegas because he was late coming out um, at the start of his concert, and he said something like, you won't believe where I was. I was in the bathroom. And uh, then he told the story. So I guarantee uh, you we will play that uh, during the, the show, during maybe before or after you say this. We'll probably play that on the show. So I myself had only just heard that a couple of days ago. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you, what did, uh, did you ever ask about where was uh, Linda Thompson while you were seeing him? No. No, I just, I didn't. Didn't really uh, care? Didn't care? (laughs) I didn't care. Well, I knew that Elvis had bought Linda a house uh, a couple of blocks down from Graceland. Mm. And Linda had been busy decorating her new house. So I just put two and two together and just thought, she was probably spending time buying furniture and picking out paint colors and wallpaper and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So, 
No, I never. I never said, "Where's Where's Linda?" Well, when you were dating Elvis, uh, did your parents? What did your parents think? Well, my father was not living. He passed away when I was when I had just turned thirteen. Uh, but my mother was. I mean, she was an Elvis fan. She lo- and, and was crazy about Elvis and his music, but she was concerned because of my boyfriend, who she really liked. And you know, was I making the wrong decision? And you know, because we were pretty serious, and uh-huh. uh, she didn't want me to to hurt my boyfriend. And uh, and I didn't want to either, but, you know, I had a chance yeah. to date Elvis Presley. Did you so, ever tell him? Did you ever tell your boyfriend that you Oh, was... did I tell my boyfriend? Yeah. Oh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and we were, well, I mean, the first night I showed him the scarf, and then, <laughs> uh, you know, four days later I had to show him the car. Uh-huh. And uh, so, no, definitely, I told him, and and it was like our relationship was never the same after that. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you a quick a quick story. He worked at night, um, at uh, and went to school during the daytime. And he worked at UPS, and he was in the warehouse, and a box dropped off a shelf, and it was a box of posters. And one particular poster fell out, and he opened the poster, and the poster had a saying on it. And it was the saying, if you love something, let it go. If it comes back, it's yours. If it doesn't, it was never meant to be. And he called me that next morning, and he said, I think I have our answer. Uh And he said... And he told me about the poster, and he said, I know you want to date Elvis. And he said, I want you to date Elvis, and if it's meant to be between us, then it's meant to be. So after that, I dated Elvis for three months. And uh, by that time, he was dating a friend of mine, and even they ended up getting married about a year later. Oh, there so, you go. So it worked out yeah. for him. So it worked out, yes. So you're you're dating Elvis. Uh, what did your friends do? Did, did you ever have any friends? Uh, I, I mean, I would think a friend would say, can I meet Elvis? Can you get me into Graceland? Did any of that happen? Or Not that I, not that I really recall. My little sister, uh, who is no longer living, but she was uh, living in Memphis at the time, and... I wanted I wanted her to meet Elvis mm-hmm. and uh I I took her out there one afternoon but it was before he he was still asleep so I showed her around Graceland but uh no nobody ever if they did I don't I don't remember mm-hmm. that people were saying oh I want to meet him I want to meet him mm-hmm. you know it was just like taking photographs when you're when you're going with somebody, I mean, which we ended up going together for three months. I mean, I never brought my camera out to Graceland and said, "Elvis, will you pose with me and let's take pictures." I mean, it just—I just never thought about it. It wasn't the thing to do. Not that Elvis would have said, "No, uh, JC, I don't want to be in a picture with you." I mean, he would right. never have said that. But I just didn't think about it i did have i do did and do have one picture that someone took right outside the memphian one night of uh elvis and me uh and sent me a copy of it and i have two other pictures that were given to me but someone else has the copyright on them and they've asked me not to publish them and Uh. of course i've honored i've honored that i understand yeah, um, okay. You know, I, I'm sure there are more out there because no matter where we went, there were always people there, whether it be in Memphis or Las Vegas or we flew to Dallas one night uh, to look at a health club. Uh, there were always people taking pictures. So I'm sure Another one. more pictures will 
turn up one of these days. We'll have to ask listeners to the show. I'm, yeah, you're right. There's got to be other pictures of you and Elvis. I'm sure we'll find something for you. 